So our first guest tonight is an Emmy-winning actress who plays a fast-talking and fictional mid-century Manhattan comic named Miriam on The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Season four premieres February 18th on Amazon Prime Video. Please welcome Rachel Brosnahan. <laughs> You flew in from New York to be here? That's, that seems like a major sacrifice now with everything going on. You know, it was an uneventful flight, which Good. feels like a gift. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. A lot of crazy stuff is going on. I know. The phones now are um, apparently knocking planes right out of the sky. What? 5G. Yeah, you got to be careful. That's great. I still have to go home, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you You might for want that. to take the bus. All right, great. <laughs> And it was freezing cold there, right? Yeah, 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 it's been pretty cold. How long have you been in New York? Because you're from, what, uh, outside Chicago, right? Yeah, yeah just yeah. north of Chicago. I've been in New York. <laughs> Chicago, people, all right. Uh, I've been in New York for 13 years. And New York is obviously a great place to live. It is, I think everybody should probably live in New York for uh, some point of their life. I agree. But what to you is the worst thing about living in New York? It just, you know, best and worst, they kind of go hand in hand. They're like opposite <laughs> ends of, you know, opposite ends of the, what was it, the same sword coin? Yeah, you know, two you know, sides you know of one coin. Yeah, for. right. You. you know, some people say that it's the, the smell of pee that greets you when the weather gets warm. Yes. But I kind of find it romantic at this point. <laughs> so many years in. Um, you know, subway delays. There, there's a there's a, a, a clanging on the heater in the winter, and nobody knows where it comes from. Um, there's a lot of ghosts there. Uh, uh, you know, and then I, I gotta say, I always there's all there's a lot of urban myths about okay. New York. Well, like what? Well, the one that I recently discovered is not an urban myth, Jimmy is that rodents uh, can climb up through the pipework. Yes, that is true. Yeah, in, in other words, you know that too. The plumbing. Yeah, yeah the plumbing, sure. it's true. So I yeah. always heard, you know, be careful because a rodent could climb up through your shower, they could climb up through your toilet, they could climb up through your sink. Uh, a friend <laughs> I like of mine- be careful. Yeah, like, yeah, what are you like, supposed to do? What are you going to do? You know, great. So I, don't, I don't know. We just, you know, it, it never actually has happened to anyone we know. That's and, why people are peeing outside, by the way. <laughs> that's right. That's right. They are not about to have their bits grabbed by a rodent. But um, uh, I found out the other day that it is, uh, it's not a myth, Jimmy. You did, it. yes. Yes, yeah. and this is what I was getting at. Yeah. Because this, I can't think of anything that would upset me more than this. No, me neither. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine texted me. She had swung by my house, uh -huh. I guess gone to use the bathroom, texted me saying, there is a dead rat in your toilet, and you have to come remove it. Yeah, yeah, thank Some you. Some friend, by the way. Yeah, right? That's, I she see didn't that as her him. responsibility. Thank you. She may have even brought that rat in <laughs> to your home. So this is a photograph of you. Who took this photograph? My husband took that photograph. Your husband? How did, okay, I have 30 <laughs> questions about this. <laughs> we'll start with number one. Yeah. What are you using there? What is that? Those are improvised uh, rat chopsticks. Rat chopsticks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Giant rat chopsticks. Yep. Yeah. And um, how did it come to be that you got the job of fishing the rat with the chopsticks out of the toilet? That's a great question. Yeah. Jimmy, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. You know, honestly, my husband and I were in such a panic. We just, we were like fast walking into the house, which seems like we really should have been running in the opposite direction. But he's going, you get it. I was like, you get it. And eventually we just decided that I would fish it out and then he would figure out how to dispose of it. That's where we landed in about 30 seconds. So I fished it out. <laughs> Not recommended. Uh -huh. um, they, I mean, there's a video somewhere. I'm just, I'm pulling it out. Blind panic. The smell. I will do you all a favor, and I will spare you. It was good. Just, it was delicious. Yeah. Um, of describing what this smell was. <laughs> I thought I was going to throw up. It, it, it was the most traumatizing experience, but also the moment that I became a New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the idea. I mean, if you are going to throw up, you're in the right, exact right position That's to do it. <laughs> That would be next. But I just throw up on top of it, and then I have to take care of both. I'm so impressed that you fished the rat, because I have to tell you, like this guy, there would never even have been a conversation in my house. It would have been like, How would that have gone? you get the rat out of the toilet, you get rid of the rat. That's what my wife would have said, <laughs> sure. and I would not have questioned it for one moment, even though I would have been absolutely mortified. I mean, this late night story wrote itself. <laughs> I had a rat in my kitchen one time, I got a pellet gun and I laid on the floor and I fought, I destroyed the kitchen with a gun. 
trying to shoot the rat. Didn't get the rat either. What happened to it, though? No, I don't know. It I ended moved. up in my I toilet. I moved out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I would move if I was you. I really Great. would. Because the one thing to have a rat in the cabinet, it's another thing to have the rat in the toilet bowl. You're right. I don't know what to do now, though, is the thing. I'm like, do I, from this point forward, always keep the lid closed so that a waterlogged rat doesn't yeah, make you, its way into my house? Yeah. Or do I leave it open so that I don't have to do this again? No, you, what you need to do is duct tape that toilet shut and never <laughs> use it again. Never go in that room again. Thank you That very room much. is now closed down. Condemned. <laughs> Consider it not even part of your house. Great, thank yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Are you usually good in a crisis? You know, yes. You are, oh, wow. I'm kind of a freak and, and I'm currently seeking therapy for this. Uh, but I, I, I'm like, I turn into like a Westworld robot. I'm the person you want with you in a crisis. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, you know, recently I had an experience, again, that, that may or may not have prompted therapy, but I, I, um, I was on the phone with someone and I was talking to a friend and I was going, I was having a bad day and I was like, it's so crazy. You know, they just, it's like they, they burned the house down on the way out. I gotta call you back. And I looked outside and there was a fire on my roof. And at I just, your house. At my house. Yeah, it's really, <laughs> maybe I should move. I looked, <laughs> I walked outside, I looked outside, there was a fire on the roof, it was raining, and so I think my brain just couldn't process why there was a fire and it was raining, and I, and I just, I just sort of walked downstairs, and my husband and a friend were downstairs, and I just went, hi, are you busy? <laughs> and he was like, uh, kind of, what's up, what's up? And I was like, well, there's a fire on the roof. <laughs> and he was like, what? And they just bolted up out, and I just sort of went, yeah, maybe I should get a fire extinguisher. And just sort of calmly went down and got a fire extinguisher. But, you know, I don't know, I, there's no, the panic button just gets turned off. For an actor, you're not very dramatic, is really what it seems like to me. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's it. And who put the fire out? Did your husband make you do husband that too? He put the fire out, yeah, thank he you. Put the fire yeah, out. Okay. he put the fire out. No one wants me near an open flame. <laughs> Where did he wind up putting the rat, in the garbage? I don't know. You don't know. I, I had to take it out. He had to dispose of it. No questions asked on either end. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. It, it might be time to uh, to be thinking about yeah, a new place, for sure, it I sounds you were gonna like. I going to say a new husband. <laughs> <Or> a new... <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, you read my mind. <laughs> Rachel Brosnahan is here, the marvelous Mrs. Mason. When we return, we'll be right back. The one you arranged with Lenny, the Penny Pan takedown, ruined my marriage and any chance at happiness, so great set. Great at Detroit, Kansas City, New Orleans, Myrtle Beach, and now the Apollo. All those shows, one of a kind, the kind of shows that only I could do. Agreed. Susie. Miriam. You know what's great about me? Your humility? No. It's when I'm me. That's Alex Forstein and Rachel Brosnahan in the new season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. How long has it been between uh, last season and this season? Two years? Two years. Time is a flat circle now. I honestly can't It's remember. crazy, yeah. Yeah. And the show premiered, what, uh, like uh, four and a half years ago? Something like that? Something. I was young then. Yeah, yeah. right. I mean, that's got to be strange to have that much time in between shows and go back and do it again. Yeah, I think especially, you know, it's the most time we've ever had off between seasons. It felt like, I think the most notable difference, we were so happy to see each other again, but was that we went away and we all got a little slower. You know, everyone everyone got to breathe and rest and take a nap. And so when we came back, the pacing was kind of off. You know, I Interesting, because your character talks very quickly, right? A million miles yeah. an hour. And and Tony Shaloub said it best. He he came off set on the first day of shooting, really complicated scene, all the children and you know, everyone in one room together. And uh, and he was like, you know, it's like it's like the words come out of my mouth and my brain is two beats behind them. <laughs> and I think that was us for the entirety of the season. But eventually, eventually we caught up and figured And the out. children on the show, you yeah. got, you have, you know, in TV, we have twins play uh, yes. uh, individual children. Yeah. So they are, what, that, how did that work? How, well, yeah, you're right. I mean, they, we went away for nearly two years, so the babies got a lot older. And this season, the little girls, and, and this season, we pick up basically right where we left off. And so we, you know, we sadly needed to replace our sweet esters. We got new esters. Oh, you fired them. Well, yeah. I wasn't going to put it that way, but. How do you let a, how old were they? They were, oh God, it's getting worse, oh. two. <laughs> they were two when you started and uh, yeah. How do you let a toddler go? What do you say, it's just not working out? Thankfully, that's not my responsibility. <laughs> it's show business, kid. <laughs> that is kind of weird, huh? It is. 
Yeah. And and is oh. it and working with kids is it uh is it slow you down too? Is that another thing that Sometimes, you know, I, I love working. I love working with the kids on this show. We have great kids. We've had a, a number of really great Esters, and the boys have been with us since the start, our Ethans, Mateo and Nunzio. But, um, you know, it's always challenging to get to know a new set of kids when you haven't worked with them before. And the thing is, it's a, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an adult show. It's not a show I would recommend right. small children uh, watch on TV. There's a lot of cursing, all this stuff. This season, the very, very first day of working with our new Esters, a really short scene with them. You know, we were trying to see how they'd be on a set, whether they'd play with the toys and be in the, you know, the, the I was going to say cage. That's not the word. <laughs> no, no, it's your, I think they call it <laughs> yeah, a crib. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, that one. Yeah, you're confusing uh, the babies with the rats. I'm not a mom. Yeah. <laughs> not a real mom. <laughs> um, and hardly, anyway. Uh, but yeah, so we, you know, we shot this scene. And of course, my only line in this scene is, it's a f man's f world kid you know and I turned to the baby I was like I'm so sorry I will pay for your therapy you know and and uh, and we do the scene and and you know they didn't want to shoot her face in case you know in case she didn't do anything or it wasn't funny or it didn't work out so they're just shooting me over the back of her head we do take one I bend down and I go it's a f man's f world kid and she looked at me and she went okay <laughs> and I was like <laughs> you know, like I, I finished the scene and then I ran back in and I was like, no, 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 the world is great and men are fine sometimes. You know, and then I was like, wait a second. Uh, and, you know, but uh, um, yeah, this so. This is going to be interesting because. I've broken the kid. You've got twins now, yeah. you're identical twins. You've now cursed at one of them sure. at this age. It's going to be interesting to see how they grow up. We have another one. Yeah, well, if the one, you have a control group now, you have a child who you didn't curse at. And you got the one you did curse at. I spent a lot of time apologizing to their mom for this one. <laughs> well, it's great to see you, Thanks. and I'm glad the show is back. It is uh, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It premieres February 18th on Amazon Prime Video. Rachel Brosnahan, everybody. We'll be back with Eric Andre. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and I am not allowed to eat this cookie until you click the subscribe button. So please click now. I'm hungry.